For those of you in the legal eagle world, <laughs> there have been some eagle beagles. Oh, who do we want to start with? You were saying uh, EU? The EU opened Samsung antitrust probe. Yeah, you know, I don't know where to start with this one. It, it, uh, okay, Samsung won their patent. You know, Apple had patents on. So now the response by the EU is we're going to probe into Samsung and accuse them of being a monopoly for having patents. I, yeah, they're, yeah the, it's, <laughs> it's basically, there's, there's their wireless patents. Uh, yeah, it's a breaking European antitrust rules. I... I <laughs> well, I don't necessarily disagree that, you know, some of the ways these patents are being used just on, by every company, not just Samsung, but I'm like, really? I'm confused. It's like, okay, you, you, what the heck does the EU have against Samsung? It's like, it's like, no, we want Apple, not Samsung. Samsung bad, Apple good. What the hell? <laughs> uh, Apple also has been under the magnifying glass of the EU a couple of times. I don't know, the EU is really... But the EU out. keeps going after Samsung for some reason. Yeah. Uh, it's well, I mean, really, it's just, there's not much to say other than to see where this thing's going to go. I mean, at this point, yeah. It, 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 the EU's been going after a lot of things lately. It's kind of weird where the EU's little laser scope's been going lately. They're like, oh, we, we don't like this. We, we don't like this. So, uh, it, it, it's like Russian roulette with the regulator. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Because it's not like the EU is newsworthy, at least. Yeah. Be interesting to see what develops of it. Exactly. Mm. Alright, so Judge rejects Oracle's fraud claim against HP. Yes, this is over your favorite technologies. Yeah, over the Actinium. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Oracle was claiming, you know, it, it was fraud on HP's part for not honoring and putting Oracle in a position and, and supporting Actinium and doing, or, or not. And I'm like, what the. I, I I agree with the judge throwing that out, and especially with it being Oracle with some of the things on. But it, is that really what we have to look forward to in tech? You know, technology. Anything happens with technology, yeah. and everybody's going to. Yeah, I mean, Oracle is. Is that really well? I mean, Oracle now has a spark chip, which is going to kick the Intel chip in the rear end all over the place. I mean, uh, what what investment are they losing? I don't know. I'm sure they did develop because Itanium is specific and there's a code for Itanium. You just can't really run an x86 software on Itanium. Um, but it started off. I mean, I think Oracle should, should probably. Well, and Oracle's discontinued their support for Itanium. You know, it, it's. I, I, I don't know. It, 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 there's this, like, real. Boxing match coming in the in the processor arena. You know, it's uh, you can see all the x86 versus ARM thing, and I, it's honestly, I think any of the vendors, including Oracle, who are stupid enough. Well, to look at their claims. They're saying these are all allegations. And HP acted fraudulently by withholding information with two firms and then to this infamous herd by And then it says Oracle said that HP knew at the time it was planning to hire X. SAP. Oh, hold on. Okay. Pause just a sec. Fade to black. Okay, we can resume. <laughs> Fade up. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so they said that um, okay, well, HP knew at the time it was planning to hire ex SAP CEO. Uh, you know, our famous uh, crush WebOS. Leo Apotheker and Oracle's former president. Yeah, yeah, who's now not with yeah. HP. Okay. And <laughs> it's like yeah. Neither of whom were the best of friends of Oracle. The firm also alleged that HP hired Lane and Apotheker because it wanted to change direction and become more of an enterprise software company like Oracle, which was true. Yes. Leo said that. I thought that Oracle claimed that HP was secretly paying Intel $88 million a year to artificially 
continue the titanium chip's lifespan and represent uh, to the public its long-term commitment. Oracle said it never would have entered into the herd agreement. So they're probably bound by some contract, you know, this herd agreement that I don't know much of the details. Well, uh, basically, here's the, here's the deal in a nutshell. Or, uh, HP is using Oracle software and Oracle wanted to drop Itanium support, and HP said, no, okay, fine, if you don't want to include it for, for new software, that's fine, but at a, at a minimum, you need to patch your current software to fix the bugs in it. And Oracle said, they don't want to do that. You know, we think Itanium's dead, we want to support this other stuff. It, it, it's the pissing match over which, right. soft, which, which hardware well, platform do you support. It's interesting what the judge said. The judge said the alleged fraud did not prevent Oracle from participating in the negotiations or deprive Oracle of the opportunity to negotiate. True. Yeah. Uh, well, no, uh, th this was basically retaliation because what, 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 you know, what we haven't brought up yet is when Oracle said they're not going to patch their software and basically void all the warranties and everything just because of the Itanium chips, HP sued Oracle. They said, you will too honor your warranties. You will too fix these bugs. And Oracle basically did a retaliatory suit. And the judge said, uh, no, you don't get to do that. You have to honor your contracts. I, 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 I'm really wondering about Oracle as a late. They're making some really. I, it's like they're. It's like it's their intention to piss the whole industry off. They're just. They're I, a big titan in enterprise. I'll tell you that. They're a titan, but you can only rattle that saber so much before you burn too many bridges. It's, and it's like they're intent on burning as many of them as they can. I, it, it's not going to hurt them overnight, but if they keep this up too long, uh, it's... We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, my favorite, Facebook. <laughs> this is my favorite. By the way, you know, I, I did close my Google Plus account, and I, I, bravo to Google, pat on the back to Google. They really are great at handling, I think, your privacy and what you want removed and do it very efficiently, effectively. No rigmarole or beating around the bush. They really do remove everything. They tell you up front. They even tell you that it can never be restored. So I, I, that's bravo to Google for their social services. Well, with the exception of people who have copied what you shared and put it on their thing, but that then that's beyond your control. Sure. Yeah. All right. So Facebook is turning to the courts to fight the clickjacking scourge, which sometimes plagues the social network site. Really? Yeah. I... <laughs> I you know <laughs> between that and the Twitter censorship thing, I don't know which one's worse. If, if, uh, for those of you who've been living under a rock, yes, Facebook is trying to get control of you know the manipulation of the social metrics, and you know what? They can try this all they damn well want. They can take it through the courts. They can do whatever they want. As long as that metric has value anywhere, people are going to manipulate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's they're, they're like they're saying it's accusing Washington-based marketing company AdSet Media of unwanted spam causing practice in a lawsuit announced on Thursday. So yeah, I, I, and I'm like, even if they win the case, they're not going to do anything about that practice. It's it's I. I I don't understand what their their logic even is. Oh well, we'll, we'll sue you, you. Do something that people want you to do. <laughs> ah, it's the that one's just stupid. You know, it's tech stupidness. Yeah, the the Twitter censorship one is scary. All right. Uh, Twitter has built into Twitter. You know, they claim you know Twitter. We're 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 the voice of the free. We're enabling revolutions around the world. Everything else. They have built a mechanism into Twitter which will censor tweets about particular topics based on geographical access point. Wow. So I guess now I have to shut down my Twitter account. <laughs> That's going to be a problem for you. <laughs> so like if somebody... I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to end up doing my blog and that's the only place I post. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I mean, basically what this... I mean, this would be the equivalent of... When the when things were going on in Egypt, if the Egyptian government had requested yes, anything in reference to this, please block from the Egyptian geographical area, and Twitter would do it. They go okay, <laughs> uh, and 
basically if they're if they if the government asks them to for their geographical area, they will block it. So you'll tweet them, but the people in your area won't be able to see those tweets because Twitter's system will block them. And that's and so that can also be with the United States as well. It, 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 when re when asked by a government. They're a little. They're, they're a little. You know, we're pointing more and more to social networks. Like I said, we should be is peer to peer. We control our own damn data. I personally would like to see the whole internet be based on a peer to peer protocol. It would distribute the bandwidth around real rather nicely, and basically there would be no servers to to target because the network itself is the servers. It's you, it's hard to it's almost impossible to take that out. Well, and the only problem we have to overcome is is is, is actually bandwidth because little servers everywhere can't if someone. It, it, the it. the two things are an efficient distribution of the bandwidth, and there's another problem you haven't thought of, and that is security, because the way our encryption thing works is only one side has the key. And for packet relaying like that to work, you'd have to impose encryption like you do with DVDs, which could create one hell of a security hole. Yeah. Well, it's right where the, every node on the network can decrypt. Sure, that, that's sure. a bad thing. <laughs> that's, uh, that you'd have to create a whole new security screen to implement that. My guess is it can be done. It's just it, those are the two problems that would have to be solved to do that. It's some really creative software engineering. But no, the Twitter one freaks me out. It is pretty freaky, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I'm like, it, 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 so basically, it, Twitter has established themselves as the great firewall upon request. That's scary. <laughs> you know, I, and you know, you know, we we defeated SOPA. Twitter is implementing sensor technology. More often than not, I go to Google.com and I see search results were removed by request. Click here to learn more. It's like, we're, wait, didn't we win against SOPA? Wait a minute. That's <laughs> like... I know. It's I know. All right, so that concludes our legal show. The legal portion. Yeah. <laughs>